recording right now. Hi. So, uh, this episode is on the Women's World Cup, as I said. So, we're going to go straight in because there's a lot to talk about. And uh, let's get into it. Right. It's that time again. Four years since the last World Cup. Hosted this year by Australia and New Zealand. Starting with this month on the 20th of July till the 20th of August. Uh, this is the first time that the two countries are jointly hosting the event this year. Um, also, uh, compared to other years in the World Cup, has expanded the format of 32 count. I was going to say counties, countries, um, instead of 24 compared to previous years, um, which is massive um, for the Women's World Cup. Uh, with there being five venues in Australia, four venues in New Zealand, they will be used for the games. With Australia having Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. Uh, hosting in New Zealand, we have Auckland, Dundin. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Hamilton and Wellington. With the stadium in Australia hosting the most capacity of 83,500, while Adelaide Stadium is the smallest, 18,435. Cap, you know, I can't say this word. Capacities. You, you get what I mean, right? Uh, with the 32 additional countries playing, we have eight countries that are making their debut, which are Philippines, Vietnam, Morocco, Zambia, Haiti, Panama. I can never say that country's name. Panama. It's P A N A M A. I'm so sorry if you're from that country and I mispronounced you. Portugal and finally my home country, the Republic of Ireland, are debuting. Uh, which also takes me to the groups. We have eight groups this year of countries playing against each other. Now, with the groups, this World Cup is first ever having the Philippines taking part. This is also the Panama. Pan no, again, I can't do it. Uh, Panama's Portugal to Vietnam's first ever FIFA's Women World Cup, having only taken part in various FIFA men's tournaments. Zambia makes history as it's the first landlocked country in Africa to qualify in World Cup for either sex. Morocco is the first ever Arab country to qualify for the Women's World Cup, while Ireland makes their first ever debut at any senior women's tournament. Thailand, Cameroon, Chile and Scotland, all of them who qualified for the 2019 Women's World Cup did not qualify for 2023 tournament. Iceland was the highest ranked team in the FIFA Women's World Ranking that have failed to qualify and ranked with 16th at the time. Zambia were the lowest ranked team to qualify ranking at 81 at the time and they qualified. Due to the uncertainty of women's sport after the Taliban taking over the country of Afghanistan withdrew from qualification. Due to COVID-19 pandemic outbreaks from their squads, Women's Asian Cup hosts India withdrew from the qualification. American Samoa withdrew due to continuing uh, difficulties to be related with the pandemic and Russia were disqualified from competing due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So let's talk about the groups. We're just gonna have a sip of water, we pause, I mean tea. There we go, we're back action. Group A is New Zealand, Norway, Philippines and Switzerland. Group B, Australia, Republic of Ireland, Nigeria and Canada. Group C is Spain, Costa Rica, Zambia, Japan. Group D is England, Haiti, Denmark and China. Group E, United States, Vietnam, Netherlands and Portugal. Group F, France, Jamaica, Brazil and Panama. I can never say the name. Group G, Sweden, South Africa, Italy and Argentina. Group H, the last group. Germany, Morocco, Colombia and South Korea. In January 2023, the FIFA Referees Committee announced the first list of the 33 referees, 55 assistant referees and 19 video assistant referees for VAR for the tournament. Of the 33 referees, FIFA has included two of each from Australia, Canada, South Korea and the United States. Hembia Sada will be the first ever Palestinian and 
Arab female referee to be associated with a World Cup for either gender. So with this, the first games will determine the first two teams in each of the group, which would be a run of two weeks between finishing around the 3rd of August. The winner and the runner up of those two, so the first two on the top of the groups, will be going against each other um, in the second time, which will lead to the round of the group round of 16, which will be on from the 5th to the 8th of August. Following the quarterfinals on the 11th and the 12th of August, semi-finals are on the 15th and the 16th. And then, of course, the main event will be on the 20th in Sydney, in the Stadium Australia. Uh, the third playoff um, will be played on the 19th in Brisbane. So, after FIFA has experienced criticism for banning One Love, One Love, oh, I didn't say that right, One Love captains armbands hours before the 22 uh, Men's World Cup, it was spent months in discussion with the women's teams to communicate on the matter. One Love armbands still banned at the Women's World Cup, which was announced last week, with similar FIFA designed armbands instead of making, uh, made, by the organization. Along with that, uh, the time zones will be quite different for everyone since the games are in Australia. Unfortunately, for the United States, it will be at 3 a.m. their time. Uh, any of the games will be starting. But even us, Ireland, we kind of have the similar times. Well, in our time zone, with the UK and Ireland. Um, for Whoa. To the US, starting at 3.30 a.m., 6 a.m., 8.30 and 11 a.m., it's exactly nearly the same for Ireland, which is a bit of a pain, um, but our time zone, of course. Um, now, that's all good if you don't work during the mornings. Unfortunately for me, I'm working, um, which means including for the final, uh, that is 11 o'clock our morning time um, on a Sunday. But there is going to be one game that I'm going to be definitely be able to see because it's on from the group F on the 29th. It's, <laughs> I can't say it, Panama versus Jamaica. Um, is that one thirty for lunchtime gourds? Who do you want to watch it? It was like the same with the Euros, right? Or no, it was the World Cup, wasn't it? Last year, the World Cup, um, most of the, t- the games were like during lunchtime. Hmm. But thankfully, there is some games I can catch on my days off, so I can't wait to see that. Especially the big one, Ireland versus Canada. It's on 1 o'clock on the 26th of August. Not August, July. Forgive me. Sorry. I'm thinking of August already. Whoa. Uh, I am wondering how we'll be able to watch it um, with some of the matches near the end of the groups. They are all, both two games from same groups is on at the same time precisely like 8 a.m or 11 a.m how are we supposed to watch two matches we can't right that's just gonna be impossible anyway uh but let's talk about the kits i have to say i'm in love with adidas this year adidas have pulled it out the bag compared to nike um usually i do com- buy a lot of nike jerseys um but this year i don't want any I actually want to buy a lot of the Adidas and I'm going to tell you which ones I really enjoyed and I'm not even going to be buying in the United States jersey this time and I have two. I have the 2015 and 2019 jerseys from the World Cups and I'm not going to be buying this one. Uh, it's literally just a white jersey with blue specks. Um, Peekaboo queen. Um... So I'm not going to be buying them, but I'll tell you which ones I'm going to be getting. So uh, from Adidas, of course, they've been inspired by the country's nature. So some of my favorites are Columbia Way kit takes the inspiration of the Cano Cristales River, often referred as the River of Five Colors, which Adidas sell- says uh, celebrates the unique changing phenomenon that recurs due to the reflection of the light against the water. Germany is inspired by the deep green woodland around within the country. From the black forest of Zoberwald, Japan's awake kit comes in, uh, striking with pink and lilac, which um, the purple around the top of the jersey and the arms and the pink on the reminder gives us 
an inspiration of the sunrise of Mount Fuji. Spain's away jersey features the eye catching floral design along the sides of the top as well as along the arms. It takes inspiration from the coral reefs found around Spain's coast. Sweden is keeping with their traditional yellow and blue for the World Cup away kit. The dark blue jersey um, draws from the glacial rivers and ice caps that are found through the country which patches of lighter blue on the graphic print. It is highlighted with yellow essence with, of course, my own country, Ireland, for a state with traditional green and white. Um, the green uh, for home and white away. Uh, but we have changed the crest, so it's a bit more modern looking, but it's the uh, retro look of the 80s crest when, or the 90s, because we were, was it the 90s? I'm, sh I'm terrible. I, it was the 90s when um, basically we were in Italia 90, which we were very close to getting to the World Cup. Or was it the Euros? I don't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not the best with that. I don't really remember because I was a baby. Anyway, with that from the kits, we're going to talk about the Ireland national team. Right, so obviously we said it was our first time going to the World Cup. Um, with the qualifying, it was tied with Scotland. Uh, until the legend Amber Barrett, who plays for a Belgian team, Standard Liege, which is on the second division, given a second goal to secure the win to, for the qualification of the World Cup. Now, with the Dutch manager Vera Ver Paul, um, announced her 23 squad just in June, here is the squad. So the keepers, we have Courtney Rosnan, who is the keeper for Everton, uh, Grace Malloy, Reading, Megan Walsh, she's a free agent from the keepers. Defenders, we have Diane Cauldron from Reading, Louise Quinn from Birmingham City, also was a former Arsenal player. Heather Payne, Florida State University, she will be a free agent after finishing up her university um, scholarship soon. Uh, Anya O'Gorman, Shamrock Rovers, Claire O'Riordan, Celtic, Nia Fahey, uh, who's also the captain of Liverpool, Izzy Atkins, West Ham. Midfielders, we have our captain, Katie McCabe, Arsenal. Uh, Cork's own finest, Denise O'Sullivan, uh, playing for North Carolina Courage. Megan Conley, a free agent. Rusha, I can, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Rus, Rusha, Little John, I should know that. She'd be a free agent as she's leaving from uh, West Ham. Uh, Lucy Quinn, Birmingham City. Lily Egg, London City, Linuses. Kira Grant, Hearts. Sinead Farley, uh, New York, no, no, yeah, New York and New Jersey got him. Kira Crosea, Crosea. Terrible with names. I could, I like, I could see the name right, and I'm just like, I know your name. I can hear it from the commentators, like, um, speaking. Uh, London City lines us. Uh, Abby Larkin, being the youngest player on the team, plays for Shamrock Rovers and Musaref, Musha. Mar Maris, oh my god. Marissa. Mar, no. I can't get the name. Marusa. Shiva. Washington Spirit. There we go, we got them. Right. Right, we got that. We, we, yeah. On top of that, we have an amazing story with Sinead Farley. She's an American born. Uh, Sinead hasn't been involved with football for almost eight years after coming out as a whistleblower in the US abuse scandal. Now, if you don't know about the US abuse scandal, let me give you a shortcut version of it. At the time, Farley was playing for Portland Tor Torns in 2014 and 2015. It was not until the 2021 where she publicly revealed the accusations of the sexual courier coin against Riley for the 2021 story in the Athletic. Riley was fired from his position and both of the National Women's Soccer League and FIFA commenced investigations in the coming days. He, uh, the Athletic uh, website led to the coach's dismissal from his then club North Carolina Courage and a subsequent lifetime ban from the National Women's Soccer League 
following a league-wide investigation which unearthed similar several other sim- similar issues among other coaches. And that's all I'm going to say. Farley was incredibly brave to step up and to lead out this story because once she did, many other coaches got fired for during uh, that time of abuse, uh, including an Irish coach, um, Derry native Christy Holly. Now, although um, Farley isn't one of isn't the one from the team that isn't afraid to step up and speak up. Uh, Captain C- Caton McCabe campaigns for the LGBT community. Chloe Mascaf um, battles with Halterkin's Lamafomaya. I don't know what that is, but I will look that up afterwards. And manager Pov uh, Bray public statement that she had been a victim of sexual assault. And all insights into the team filled with role models who have overcome an adversity stand up for social justice. Uh, on and all have spoken out with these topics in the last year. Now, in the somber moment, Amber Barrett dedicated her winning goal um, against Scotland um, playoff to the victims of last year's de- uh, disaster in Crees Lock in the village where her grandparents live. Um, She said, I'm dedicating it to those 10 beautiful souls who unfortunately perished. She was an emotional emotional during an interview after beating Scotland. For all their families, this is Crease Law. This is for Donegal. Um, So last year there was an unfortunate event where a building, which was beside a gas station in Donegal, uh, blew up and killed 10 innocent people and it was acknowledged that there was a gas leak up in the apartment but no one was aware of it at the time so that's what happened um i do truly believe we have a very good chance on winning our group stage with australia following us um we won't be buying down to any of the hosts or even canada or even african country nigeria all i hope is we defend against well sam kerr and Carpenter from Australia in the first opening game because that's going to be the one that everyone's going to be watching and it has sold over 88,000 tickets for that match so there's going to be a lot of eyes on that match definitely um with the time zones we're going to talk about the times of the matches so for the Ireland games I'm not doing any other countries we're just doing Ireland because you know me I'm a proud Irish woman Mm mm-mm so the first match is the 20th and that's Australia versus Ireland and that's at 11 o'clock in the morning. Then the next game is Wednesday the 26th which I'll be able to watch. I can't wait. 1pm. And then Monday the 31st it is Ireland versus Nigeria at 11am and I'm totally most likely going to be working that morning so I will be listening from work. And if anyone at work thinks what is she listening at? What's that noise? Turn it down. I'm not turning it down. I'm going to listen. I'm going to, like, if Ireland score, I'm going to do a happy dance. I have no regrets. Mm-mm. Right. Along with that, Australia has a documentary which was aired on Disney+, Plus, which um, was released this year, I think 2023, um, or even before that, um, which is just an introduction and a warm-up of the World Cup, going through the qualification to the host... And get to know the players like Sam Kerr, Steph Cately, Caitlin Ford, Lydia Williams and Ellie Carpenter. Sam Kerr being one of the best forwards in the world and Chelsea's women's top goal scorer. She was a gifted player. I'm telling you, she's terrifying on the field. I am scared when Arsenal are playing against her in Chelsea or any other country that is playing against her. I would freak because she's on fire and there's no way you can like properly stop her right um i will be interested to see how they do as a team at the stage and the pressure being the hosts of the country as well uh england squad won't have their captain leah wilson or bet mead due to injuries of acl including the dutch won't be having viv media um either uh, Millie Bright will be captain of the team, including some fresh players. Uh, the fresh centre half pairing of Jess Curran and Esme Morgan and Ellie Roebuck. Now, the women's 
Equality Committee Chair, Caroline Noakes, actually recently um, has been asking major brands like Adidas, Nike, Puma and Umbro for information on their approach for the design um, to manufacture and marketing of football boots that will research that they can be specifically designed for women, including how they could prevent avoiding injuries like the ACL because I'm telling you now a lot of ACL injuries has been happening for every country since the Euros and it's been frightening um I think so far if I remember doing the last podcast episode I've done the football there was 37 of them that's a lot that is a lot and that is terrifying to hear that many injuries because that takes about a year and a half of recovery so Hmm. Along with that, we're going to be talking about the retaining champions, the United States, uh, announcing their 23 squad two weeks ago. Having the youngest member on the team is Alyssa Thompson, and she's only 18. Uh, and all course, they couldn't have without the fresh ones, the ones we always need and been watching for a long time. Alex Morgan, Megan Rapone, which I'm hoping it's our last World Cup. I'm going to be just saying this right now. I don't like Megan Rapone. And that's controversial, apparently, but I don't care. I don't like her. Never have. I'm sorry. Um, Julie Ertz, Lindsay Horan, Rose Laville, Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara, and the keeper, Alyssa Norher. Nor- <laughs> I can't get the name. I could see it. I, I, I know the way it's pronounced. I just can't get it. My brain doesn't... Whatever's with my brain to my mouth, it doesn't pronounce things for it. It's my dyslexia. Apologies for it. Uh, with the remaining squad for me to be unknown, as they are newer and the future generation of the national team. It is weird to say that the squads I have been following since 2009 to 2019 uh, were all my all-time favourites, and I could not stop watching them. Uh, with the retirements of the sport and having new and upcoming players to play, I must give them a chance to figure out the team and gameplay and get it. So I'm I'm willing to open myself up this World Cup to get to know the team a bit more. I feel like um, um, I just don't know them anymore since 2019. Because I kind of slowly gave... Not that I haven't been slowly giving up on them. It's just like I just... Since there were so many retirements. Um, the people I really enjoyed watching aren't there. I wasn't really allowing myself to... Give my time to them anymore. I was more interested in what's going on with the Lionesses. The Spanish team. Even Germany. Yeah, don't ask. Um, right. Um... Yeah, so since 2019, the team has been figuring out their flow, even though they're still winning games until they had a match against the Euro winners, England. That was the first loss I've seen uh, for the American team uh, and was also in Wembley. Maybe that was karma for them because the win, they beat England in the World Cup and Alex Morgan did that pose with the teacup. I mean, that was one of the coldest moves, but I felt disgraced for England, but I'm not English, so I don't really care. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but it will be interesting to see how they will go far as a team. And I will definitely be see, like, I can see they can go to the quarterfinals, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if they're going to win it. But it'd be interesting, right? Because, you know, I feel the progression of the European teams have improved so much since four years. Um, we've seen it at the Euros last year like I mean, of course it was Germany versus England but um, the other countries have definitely improved and you can see they're putting the work in uh, all, also bear in mind that the teams would be flying out to Australia all in business class first time ever um, and Brazil arrived to Australia this week as in two days ago um, they had a message on their plane um, which was a tribute to the Iran protesters of the Women's World Cup with a strong statement of human rights. Uh, the squad 
landed in Brisbane on Wednesday morning on a plane. Oh no, yesterday. So it was yesterday. Wow, that's news quick. Uh, bearing the pictures of Iranians Masha Aminin and Amir Nasser Azadani on the tail. Uh, on the body of the plane, it were had the words, No woman should not be forced to cover her head. And no man should be hanged for saying this. Uh, Amani's death is in custody after being detained by Iran's morality police in September last year sparked a widespread protest against the country and ignited further resistance in the regi- regime um, treatment of women. As Danny, a former football player, was arrested during the protest and later sentenced in prison for 26 years. Uh, Brazil's statement uh, comes... After FIFA confirmed the players would not be allowed to wear the rainbow or one love armbands in support of the LGBT rights, instead of revealing eight stationed alternatives for the teams to choose before the team could take off from Brasilia on Monday, their superstar Marta uh, confirmed this tournament will be her last World Cup. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh no, uh, uh, has been an understand the com- time has come for us to prioritize other things, she said. Having the other chance of going to another World Cup is my sixth, is surreal. Wow, six World Cups, damn. Marta was one of my all-time favorites too, because like, she's just idol. She, like, what she's done for women's football, but also not just in Brazil, she's been in... Uh, Orlando Pride she I remember there was a clip that she got red carded but kind of defended that it was for another player um, and that was a big deal that was, it was a few years ago um, but yeah I mean I don't really know if I have a prediction for this episode that who I think is going to win because it can be really anyone I will say that America probably will get to the quarterfinals um, I really want Ireland to do well, and I hope so. We might be, I think we might get to the, like, top 16 group. If we can go, go further, that would be amazing. But I really, I don't, I don't think so. But, um, like, top five teams I would be keeping an eye out to watch would definitely be Spain. I'm going to say Colombia. I, I really like their Colombian jerseys, so I'm going to keep an eye on them. Definitely going to say South Korea will do well. Maybe Japan. Um, and uh, we'll just throw in them randomly in the mix. Uh, let me think of a country there now. I'm going to just throw in there that I think will... France. France. Yeah, France are going to do well. The, Wendy's coming back. She she came back since they have a new coach because the coach... Uh, they previously had uh, caused a lot of players to not return to the national because apparently the way they were being treated or her regime was just too much for them that could be it you know um but yeah okay uh, do you know what i do i'll just do the groups which group i think two countries will get in right okay group a i'm gonna say norway and i'm gonna say switzerland Right. Group B, obviously Australia and Republic of Ireland. Duh. C, Spain and Japan. D, I'm going to say England and Denmark, maybe. Uh, e, I'm going to say United States and the Netherlands. Uh, F, France and oh, Jamaica's there too, maybe. Uh, but I'm going to say Brazil. They probably get in 16. Group G, six, Sweden, oh no, Italy and Argentina. I'm gonna see Argentina, honestly. I think Italy haven't been great. I remember watching them in the Euros last year, they didn't do as good. Um, Group H, Germany, obviously. Um, those side like careers in there, I'm gonna see Colombia. So that's what I predict. I don't know from out of all of them who will win, but they're the teams I think that will get there. We'll see, we'll see. Um, but this is the episode. Thank you for listening. And um, we'll do another episode while uh, after the World Cup. So we'll, we'll we'll have a review of everything. So this is a pre-World Cup um, chat. So thank you for listening. And I will see you all soon. And that is the recording.
on the podcast. <laughs>